In this Rhino Grasshopper tutorial, we want to model a kinetic sculpture uh, in Grasshopper, uh, which is based on the model of Stingray by Apical Reform. Uh, I'm going to explain step by step how we're going to make that in Grasshopper, uh, how we can control the distance between these uh, sections, uh, the number, we can add them up. Also, we can control the speed. And you can see that I can make it faster or slower. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you're new to our channel, welcome and subscribe because we have weekly tutorials on Rhino Grasshopper. And if you want to learn Grasshopper from scratch, step by step, and with advanced techniques, you can enroll in our course. I'm going to put it up here, uh, the lessons we are adding. Okay, let's get started from scratch. First, what I'm going to use in Rhino is that you can see I have used this simple line with a point which is going to define the rotation. So let's just do that in Rhino. It's really easy. You have to click on line. The start of the polyline is zero and enter is going to be at the center of the axis. And if you hit the shift key, you can uh, use the auto. You can see it down here. The auto is going to be activated and I can draw the line. Uh, then we're going to also add a point at the end uh, which is going to define the rotation of the lines. Okay, let's bring that into Grasshopper by going into the par uh, Parms menu and selecting this line or curve thing. You can uh, select both, but I'm usually using this curve. Let me just put the bifocals plugin because it's easier to handle and it can contain both curves and lines. Let's set this to the curve and set this point to the point. And now the first step is to make a series of arrays uh, of these lines, right? So it's really easy. We have to go to the transform and use this uh, linear array here. You can see the uh, icon and let me just show you that. That is the linear array. And then we can bring it down and give it to the curve. Okay, the default direction is X. So I'm going to just say, another x input unit x give it here and then we can control the distance by defining the factor so I'm going to say okay, 0 0.2 we can also increase that to maybe more and make that happen okay that's basically the distance uh, by the way you can download this example file from our website uh, link is in the description okay uh, the next step is to define the count. Uh, I'm going to define the count, so maybe we just say from 10 to 50. And uh, let's just get rid of this number slider title. So if I give it to count, you can understand this is the count. And we increase these sections. Okay, these are the 50 lines we have produced. And now what we want to do is to, first of all, I want to show you the rotation. Uh, I'm going to use this rotate. 3D to rotate it, so I'm going to say rotate 3D, rotate these lines. The center of rotation is uh, going to be a series of points on the start and the end. You can do a technique. First, you can use this linear array, Control C, Control V, and array these points to bring it down like that. Or you can just get rid of this point. Uh, we can even delete that. I just wanted to show you that you can use this linear array, but you can use this command uh, curve and this tool called point on curve. This is going to help you to extract a point from a curve, which you can see we can just select where we want to rotate them. And this zero can help us to rotate that from the start. Uh, let's just turn this off, preview off. And now 
we can define the axis of rotation, which is the axis x, because if we want to rotate a line uh, around an axis, the point of rotation, the axis of rotation, which is x, uh, it's going to uh, bring it upright. It's going to bring it up like that. It's going to be in this plane. So it's exactly what we need. Uh, I'm going to give this an x. And if you right click on the angle and select the degrees, you can see I can give from 0 to 60, for example, and control all of them for the rotation. Let's just turn the linear array off. And that's it. So now, what we want to do is to uh, go and work with the uh, radians because the degree, uh, I'm going to explain why I'm going to switch back to radians because the default input in Grasshopper is in radians. You can see that it's radians. Okay, let's do that. The first thing uh, I'm going to do here is to use a range. A range tool is going to give you a series of, of numbers between. Uh, domain, which for now is from 0 to 1, and the steps is going to define how many numbers you need. So what I want to do here is to uh, define the steps, uh, which in this example, because we have 30, uh, excuse me, 50 of these, we're going to give that to the steps. But remember, when you add the steps to 50, uh, what's going to happen is that the range number output is going to give you 51. The reason we have this here is that because it's going to divide a domain, for example, uh, for now it's like 0 and 1 here, into the number of steps. For example, if I divide it into two steps, it's going to give you three numbers, right? So it's like 0, 0 0.5, and 1, which means three numbers, one added to that input. Uh, I'm going to go here and right-click expression and say x minus 1. That means we need exactly the same output of these things. Uh, the domain here is between a rotation we need. Uh, for example, I'm going to go to the math and use this construct domain to produce a complete controllable uh, number for the domains. Uh, if you give that to the domain, you can see that this is the start and the end. For example, we want to start from 0 and then uh, because it's in radians, I'm going to use pi. And if you know pi is the basics of uh, radians, for example, if we have a circle and we start from here, which is 0, uh, we can have uh, 90 degrees at like pi divided by 2, and we can have 180 degrees at pi, right? So radius, radians is going to be in pi, uh, we can say we need that in pi, 180 degrees, that's okay. Uh, when we go here, you can see that this is going to uh, define uh, the range, and I'm going to give that to the angle. Okay, you can see that it's uh, rotating 180 degrees, uh, which is a little bit of a problem here, because it's going to come like uh, 0 going to uh, 90 degrees and to 180 degrees, which we don't want to bring those lines outside of this axis, right? So what I want to teach you here is to work with some techniques in radians. The first one is to use the sign when you want to use a range, because when you connect a range to a sign, it's going to convert that between 0 and 1, right? And this is going to give you a range. Let me just show you here by giving it to the angle. You can see that this is going to exactly uh, make it what we want. It's like 180 degrees. Okay, for those who want to know more about the sign, let me explain why we, uh, we are using the sign as an output. Uh, in a circle, when we have like a 180 degrees here, right, uh, what's going to happen is the sign let me show you in blue. The sign from this angle uh, is going to be always positive, okay? Because it's going to be like uh, this edge, right? And in the top of the uh, 180 degrees, it's going to be always like positive, right? 
But if you go to like the uh, cosine, which is this part, it's going to be in like the positive and negative, right? So this is a technique you can use to use the sine to produce that. Okay, now how can we make an animation? Because this is just giving a sine wave to this. Uh, we can control that by, uh, if you check out these numbers here, uh, you can see that these are adding up from zero again to back to zero. We have to shift these numbers, so each of these numbers goes to the second one. Uh, we can do that by using a shift tool, with this, uh, which is called shift list. You can find it in the sets, and in the list you can find it in here. By the way, if you want to know more about data and data management, you can enroll in our course. We have a complete section on this. Uh, okay, now, for now, we're going to just shift this list. But because the number is like 50, if I give a number slider from 0 to 50 to the shift uh, offset, which is the offset, you can see that this is going to work. So that is how it's going to make the wave, right? That's it. That's the technique I wanted to teach you today. But for now, uh, how can we make this? Uh, automatic. I'm going to go to the Parms menu, Utility, and use this timer. Uh, the timer is going to be like the interval is going to be 20 milliseconds, so it's faster. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make a number slider like 0 0.05. This is the speed of this adding up, right? And then I'm going to uh, give this to a number which is this container up here. Okay, if you connect that timer to the number here, it's going to just refresh the output, okay? This technique works with when you use this data recorder with the timer. And now let me show you that this is actually just recording this input we just gave to the number. Okay, the next part is to add that up. So we are making a timer with Grasshopper. In the math, we're going to use this mass addition and give it to the input. You can see the results is just a timer. We can uh, reset that with just this tool, reset the number. Uh, we can increase the speed with this number slider. Okay, that is the number, but uh, how can we control that uh, to give it to the like 0 to 50 for the shift offset, right? Again, I want to show you a technique which is really cool and especially when you're working with the loops. Uh, what you can do here is to multiply that 50, go to the math, use multiplication and multiply that with the result of the timer. The reason we are doing this is that it's going to shift this 50 and when you increase that number it's going to like go 60, 70, 150, 1000. And by the way, the shift list is going to use this as an indication that it's like three times 50, four times 50. Okay, that's a small hint you can use. And by giving that to the shift, it's going to work. So that's the way you can use that. And now you can see that we can increase or decrease the speed. And you can see how this is rotation. And uh, at the end, we are going to simply just scale that. Uh, okay, now we have to scale. I'm going to use the scale tool to scale these lines. The center of rotation, the center of scaling is going to be the same as this point. So we can just get this point back to the scaling center. And you can see the default is 0 0.5, I guess. So it's just putting those lines into half. But for now, uh, what we wanted to do is to make that scaling between like 0 0.1 and 1. So it's going to scale differently uh, based on what we need. How can we do that? Uh, we can simply uh, use this uh, tool, uh, which is a remap number. Uh, what we need here is to use that uh, list, which we are shifting, and use this technique. We're going to use the remap numbers which is the default tool for this tool. I uh, give it to the value. The source domain is between 0 and 1. We are sure that this is between 0 and 1 because we use the sign 
outputs, right? Because we use the sign output, we are sure that the domain is between 0 and 1. But if you want to be sure that you are getting the source domain right, you can use this in the math section, the bounds. This is actually going to work on any source for the numbers. And then the target is exactly what we need. The domain of the target is to make a construct domain and define the minimum and the maximum of the scaling. So I'm going to say maybe 0 0.1 to 1 is the maximum scale and give that to the factor. Okay. And now you can see that's happening. Uh, we can flip it to make it like that. It's a complete sine wave with the scaling. I just wanted to show you how you can use this technique to produce a wave sign exactly like the stingray, something similar to that. And now we can just say a mirror and produce a mirror of these lines, which is, by the way, the x a z plane. That means the x and the z it's going to make the mirror. So I'm going to say an x z plane and we are good to go. That's it. If you want to make it a little bit of an offset, we can extract the origin and move it a little bit in the y direction. That's how you can do that. And produce the wave. That's really cool. We can control anything. Even if you rotate the point from another location, it's going to be a new sculpture. You can see that these are going to be rotated at the end, like this. If you put it at the center, it's going to be like these, but we want it to be at the start. Uh, we can control the number, by the way. It's completely parametric. Uh, we can control the distance between these lines and we can just make this line a little bit smaller or bigger by changing it in Rhino. You can even define that in Grasshopper but I wanted to show you that you can also use the Rhino as some inputs. Okay the last thing for those who have watched this video till the end is to make the pipes. Uh, let me put all of them into a curve container. So I'm going to use the shift key to put that into a container, turn everything off. And now we want to make a series of pipes. It's going to slow down uh, the process, but for now I'm going to type pipe and use this pipe variable thing. You can also find it in the surface, a free form, and here are the pipe variable. So we're going to put that to the curve. Uh, remember to reparameterize this because it's going to be from 0 to 1. If you don't know about these things and you want to learn the basics of Grasshopper, you can watch the uh, introduction for beginners in our YouTube channel. Just check out, check out our channel. You can watch that Grasshopper for beginners tutorial. Okay, for now, uh, what we want to do is to define that uh, the reparameterize is going to make that line from 0 to 1. Uh, the pipe parameters is, I'm just going to give a radius at the start and the end. So the parameters are going to be set multiple numbers, just 0 and 1. It means the start and the end. Now the radius can be at the start like 0 0.1 and the end like, let's just make this a number slider from 0 0.1 to maybe 0 0.6 with two decimals. We have to define two numbers because uh, the input of the parameters is 2. You can see it's going to give you an error because we don't have the second one. And I'm going to just change this. Obviously, the end is going to be bigger. That's exactly what we need. We can just give it a cap like round at the end. It's going to even make it slower. So you can see that the round thing is happening here. Okay, just go back to flat. It's a little bit faster and the none is the fastest way. You can just visualize the results. That's it. Okay, I hope that this tutorial was useful and be sure to like this video so you can see more and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.